Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. We are back. Uh, we went live earlier today, um, and we uh, broke and uh, we uh, reacted to the Pro Box card, decent card again. Uh, but today, now, right now, we're going to get into. Sorry about that. We got crap all over the place here, y'all. All right, sorry about that. We're gonna get into uh, Chris Colbert, Jose Venezuela, part two. Uh, the rematch, before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Vlog, and all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes at you for every major fight, uh, showing you how to uh, bring down the house and make money on every card. Uh, we're going to get it all back. We're off to a good start this week. Um, we, we're going we're gonna to get it all back, and we got a good rematch um, to, to get it all back on. Again, I don't gamble. Um, I use DraftKings to show you the odds. Can't even use DraftKings in Texas. Not allowed. That's illegal. Um, but if you do gamble, I'm going to show you how to make a second source of income. There's a, there's always a bull market. There's a bull market somewhere. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how to make money. The odds makers, the, the boxing bookies, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to, they don't know how to handicap the sport. I do. I'm going to show you how to bring this down. Um, and if you stick with me, you're going to consistently make money week in, week out. Also, subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. We're going to be at the Bam Rodriguez fight, and I'm going to go live afterwards, uh, hopefully, um, as long as the internet allows it. Um, and uh, but we'll react to that live as well. Um, all right, let's get into uh, let, let's get into today's show. All right, Chris Colbert uh, got a. A, a lot of people, and I'm a truther in this, I thought Chris Colbert eked out a decision. Very close, could have went either way, but I thought he eked out a decision with Venezuela. Most did not. Teddy Atlas went ballistic. I thought that was ridiculous. It was a very close fight. I thought the judges got it right. Uh, Venezuela is long. He's rangy, but he can't be clocked. Uh, he's flat-footed. He leaves himself so wide open, and he's pretty slow. Uh He's got excellent power. He's an excellent body puncher. He's a good, you know, he's what you would expect from a long, tall Mexican fighter. Uh, he's got a good right hook, southpaw. Uh, really good, diverse attack, head, body, head, body, mixes up speed, mixes up punches, mixes up combinations. Sometimes one shot, sometimes three shots, different speeds, different tempos, different levels. He's a really, really, really good at that. He changes levels exceptionally well. He's a, he's a good offensive fighter. He's a good offensive fighter. He's an excellent body puncher. Uh, he's just easy to hit. He's just easy to hit. Um, you know, in the first fight, he knocked Colbert down right away, got up on the scorecards, uh, and it took I think it took Colbert a while to calm down. Uh, it took him a while to calm down, settle in, get in the fight. Now, now Colbert, uh, once he did that, I, I, I thought – Changed the momentum of the fight. Won the second half of the fight. Eked out a very, very close decision. Um, but he needs to land. You know, Colbert switch hits. I don't expect him to, to be in the southpaw stance. And when he does, um, he, he needs to land with that right hook because it's so wide open. Um, and he needs to stay off the ropes. You know, he just gets these lulls, right? Like, he did this with Garcia, too. And, like, he'd be winning the round. And then he would just get in this lull. And... Garcia would whack him and and and, and rally and, and you saw Venezuela doing the same thing. Like if he just stays busy, like he's got enough power. He's not a big hitter, but he's got enough power where he can make you respect it, right? Like you can't like like Reed just talking about Devin Haney, right? Like it's that quick kind of power where you just kind of have to respect it. And um, I, I I think. Um, Colbert's got to, in spots, stand his ground, but not too long. He's got to get back, start circling, start using his speed, start using his jab, and, and control the fight. But you can't run for 12 rounds, right? Especially against a guy that's 12 long, he's going to really cut the ring off on you. Um, so you get, you, there's times you're going to have to stand in. Just don't stand against the ropes. Hit him, stand, stand your ground, beat him to the punch, hit him with you know jab, hit him with the power shot, keep circling, keep moving, 
rinse, repeat. He gets all the way on the inside, maybe tie him up, work him up a little bit. You can't just run, right? That's not going to work. But he also can't get into these lulls where he just high guards, covers up, and lets his opponent. He did this with, 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 with Garcia, too. You cannot do that. Um you know, he throws in – Chris Cobble throws in combinations. you got to throw in combinations. you got to distract this guy. Um, that's what um, De La Santos was able to do, right? Just just keep him guessing. Throw away punches. Don't let him get comfortable, right? Don't let him get your timing down. Throw in combinations. Distract him. With, with jab, jab, throw a shot by – and then boom, put the, put, put the power shot behind it. Um, Chris Cobble, what I would say is he needs to fight 180 seconds of the round, right? He needs to fight the full – three minutes of every single round. Like, just don't take lulls, right? Because that's when this guy's going to whack you, and that's what happened, right? Don't get over-aggressive. Don't get over-passive. Fight your fight. You can come forward in spots, and you can go backwards most of the round, right? But you're going to have to stand your ground. You're going to have to pick times to fight him in the pocket, and you can do that. You can take steam out of him. Um Keep him distracted and, and don't lunge. He's got a bad habit of lunging. Um, you're gonna get tagged that way. Like I, I think the fight falls on Colbert. If Colbert executes the way he's capable of, um, and, and and he doesn't make a bunch of mistakes, he's gonna win the fight. If he does leave himself open and he does and he does get lazy and he does cover up and he does lunge in and he does just throw his one shot at a time and he, and he does show up. He's going to lose, right? But I, I think Chris Colbert took a lot from the first fight. I think Chris Colbert knows his career, which was he's expected to be like the next great world champion from New York City. You know, Brooklyn's next great fighter. It's kind of on the line here. Like, he needs to win. He needs to look impressive. He's going to get dropped, right? Uh, so I, I think he knows that. And I, I think we're going to get the, the very, very best of Chris Colbert. Uh, so I'm picking Chris Colbert to win. Um, I think he's going to win a decision, but let's, let's pull up the odds. Let's take a look, Ski, at what we're, what we're looking at here. Uh, oh, and I – all right, give me a second. I was going through this on the other show. All right, Chris Colbert. So I'm taking Chris Colbert. By technical decision, by by decision, technical decision, I'm taking Chris Colbert on points, um, and that's paying in plus one eighty. I think it's a pretty good bet. Um, take the over ten and a half. Paying forty two fifty five. It's a nice little. Hedge there. And I'm taking Chris Colbert. Win on the money line. So right here, um, this is a pretty good bet. Where's my bet? Here it is. So what are we looking at? We're looking at 180, 285, and 42, 7, 12. 327.55. So three dollar bet makes you 327.55 if Colbert wins on points. Colbert wins on points, you get 327, 300. You, you know, if you wanted to, you could get rid of the uh over 10 and a half. You could drop that. It makes your net a little better, right? Because at that point, a, a two hundred dollar bet would make you uh 285. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, Chris Colbert on, on points here is 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 the really best bet here. So I would do that. Take Chris Colbert. You know, you could drop. You know, Chris Colbert. I would leave it like this. Chris Colbert's not going to knock him out. You could get rid of Chris Colbert on the money line and make a two times bet on Chris Colbert by technical decision if you wanted to. Um, you could do that. I, I actually, I'm going to do this. Make it half and one and a half. So this way, all right, 150 dollars bet makes you 420. 50 dollars bet makes you 102. So now you, the same $200 bet that we just had is making you, you know, 320 and 50, 372. It's a little better. I would do that. All right, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, 520. Yeah, 320.
on Twitter, 320 on Twitter, I'll bet. It's pretty good odds. Colbert went to my decisions. And then you get a little bit more on the over. It's a pretty good bet. Chris Colbert, um, I think this is a pretty pretty safe bet. I think Chris Colbert's going to win this fight. Uh, if he does, if you, if, if he cleaned up pretty well. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Who do you think won the first fight? What are your thoughts on the second fight? Uh, but this is how we're going to make money. Again, the boxing bookie comes at you for every major fight. Uh, showing you how to bring down the house. Showing that there is a bull market somewhere. Uh, please follow me, Old Forms 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Also on Texas Boxing. Scene that's completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is December 14th, 2023 from Texas to the world. Thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.